In this episode, we'll try to finally take care of a problem I've been complaining about with this truck pretty much since first driving it. The issue I'm referring to is how loose the steering is. We've certainly made progress in this department, having replaced just about every steering component there is. Pitman arm, idler arm, inner and outer tie rod ends, both sides, front wheel bearings, steering box, and we've got what seems like a pretty decent alignment on the truck, but it still wants to wander all over the road. Quite a few of you have pointed out that it's probably the rag joint in the steering column, and since it wasn't obviously cracked until I replaced everything else, I kinda had my doubts. But now, I'm pretty sure you are all correct. So to take care of that, we're going to be replacing the intermediate steering shaft. This is something I'd read about and wanted to do since even before I owned the truck, I think. The factory S10 steering shaft has a U-joint where it meets the steering column, but a rag joint, which is basically rubber with fiber reinforcing similar to that found on tires, which maybe was okay back in 1988 when this truck was made, but now that it's been 30 years, that original piece of rubber probably has more flex than it should. So, we'll replace the entire intermediate shaft with one from a Jeep that has two solid U-joints. This swap has been around for a long time, and it can be a little confusing because there are several models of Jeep Cherokee steering shafts to choose from, so I did some research and some comparison and found this Jeep steering shaft, which I believe is going to be the best fit. This part, according to the seller, is from a 96 to 98 Jeep Grand Cherokee. I bought this one off of eBay, mostly because I was looking for this very specific variant for 30 bucks plus shipping. Those Jeeps are very common, so I'm sure at the right junkyard you could find one for at least half that price. But since this one was in good shape and not rusted to hell and the exact model I was looking for, I felt okay about paying a little bit more and saving some time and inconvenience. Normally on this channel, inconvenience is the name of the game, so we're kind of stepping our game up here. Uh, 2018 me, so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. So optimistic and hopeful and confident that the steering shaft project would be a simple one. Also quite wrong, but we'll follow the order of events here, and the first thing we did once we received our new steering shaft was to take a look at the old one that's currently on the vehicle. The main reason we're replacing it is an attempt to remove the slop in the steering system, but it also still does hit the exhaust manifolds of the engine a little bit, and it'd be nice if it didn't. The Jeep steering shafts are a little bit smaller in diameter, so they clear some things like this exhaust manifold a little bit better. And when looking closely at this area, we notice there's even some wiggle between the intermediate steering shaft and where it hooks onto the column itself. It seems like it's just not a super tight fit there, and that through bolt is holding it on for the most part, but it can still pivot on that a little bit. Hopefully this is another place where we can remove a little bit of play from the whole system. In an attempt to see if the play was actually coming from that rubber rag joint, we'll pull back the plastic steering shaft cover and wiggle it around a bit. The tires of the truck are still firmly on the ground, so there is plenty of resistance to movement. So, really, I think this test confirmed my original suspicion that this rubber joint was not actually the issue. It's still not necessarily ideal to have it at all, but it also doesn't seem like there's a lot of motion being lost to it. And motion being lost is what we're looking for, since that's where the loose feeling of a steering system comes from. And as far as we can tell from here, the only places significant motion is being lost is from the tall tires themselves and that steering box. Our recently installed, remanufactured steering box. They are supposed to be set up optimally from the factory, but it seems like in the future we'll have to give a go at adjusting it ourselves to hopefully make it a little bit better. But at this point it appears that even our remanufactured unit is a bit worn out. What we'll do is go ahead with our steering shaft replacement plan, since it still is an upgrade, and it'll clear things better, and... I don't know, we're kinda committed to it at this point, I guess. So, to get started on this, the first thing we'll do is remove the old S10 steering shaft. With it rotated just right, we can get a swivel socket on the nut for the through bolt, and remove it pretty easily. The bolt is a special one, constructed a bit like a carriage bolt in that it's got a square section that locks into the intermediate steering shaft hub to keep it from rotating. So while pushing the bolt into the hub with one hand to keep it locked in place, we can loosen and remove the nut. Then we can push the bolt through and remove it. Next we'll slide away the bottom cover and see where the bottom bolt is facing, and remove that bolt. <laughs> 
This one is a pinch bolt that has threads built into the intermediate steering shaft and does not have a nut on the other side. Now, in order to remove the steering shaft fully, we either have to loosen up the steering box or compress the shaft. We had to hammer on it quite a bit to get this shaft to compress the first time, but since we've already done it and anti-seize the two pieces together, it should compress relatively easily. In an attempt to try to keep out water, we put some electrical tape over this joint, so we'll remove that before trying to compress it. Then we should just be able to lift up from the lower end of the shaft and retract the upper end inside of it. Well, that was the theory anyway. Despite that anti-seize, the rust inside the shaft must have come back with a vengeance. Or, you know, never really left. Prying between the lower half of the steering shaft and the gearbox didn't really seem to be working, but using a hammer and that pry bar against the upper half did start to get things moving. But we do want to be nice to the parts inside the steering column, so we don't want to be too rough about it. And eventually, the shaft compressed enough that we were able to grab it and pull it off of the vehicle. Also, eventually. And there you go, we can go ahead and test fit the new shaft, and it slides right into place on the gearbox. Only, now that we're looking at it here on the vehicle, there seems to be a minor problem with the other end of the shaft. And that eensy weensy minor problem is that it's a completely different size and it doesn't fit at all. So yeah, this one off eBay is the wrong steering shaft. This came off of a Jeep Grand Cherokee, which apparently uses the same gearbox, but certain models in certain years use a different steering column end. It seems that if the steering shaft has the large bulky cast end, then it's not going to fit an S10. What you're looking for is the thinner version that uses a piece of stamped steel. So, uh, there, there goes that plan. Uh, I suppose we could cut and weld and really do some modification to make this thing fit, but in the end, it probably wouldn't be worth all that effort, and we'd really have to put some faith in those welds. So, for now, what we're going to do is, well, reinstall the steering shaft we just removed. We slotted it back into place and hammered on it a bit to extend it again, and reinstalled and torqued the upper and lower hardware. So as far as the truck is concerned, we have done nothing at all. But I still want to change out the steering shaft, so we're going to have to go looking again for another one. One off of a Jeep non-Grand Cherokee, and I definitely want to see it in person before paying for it, because I need to make sure it's actually going to fit this time. So instead of hitting eBay again, we went and hit a local parts yard. And pretty quickly, we found this 1996 Jeep Cherokee. The steering shaft sure looked correct, and it had already been picked over a bit in the engine compartment, which should make getting to the steering shaft even easier. So just like on the S10 Blazer, once we found a good angle for that lower steering shaft bolt, we went ahead and removed it. Only, not unlike the Blazer, the bolts weren't the only thing holding that steering shaft in place. However, this shaft had never been collapsed in the life of the quite rusty vehicle, and it was extremely seized in place. And this time, we weren't even worried about gingerly removing it from the vehicle. <laughs> I think I moved it a little bit, because it's like half an inch off now. And after not a small amount of effort, eventually we gave up on collapsing the shaft and just unbolted the steering gearbox. That allowed us to pry loose the lower end, and then... Again, eventually, we were able to pry loose the upper end and completely remove the intermediate steering shaft. Ha! Yes, that is the right kind. And here it is back at the home workbench. As you can see, this steering shaft has a bit of rust on it, but all things considered, it's really not too bad. We'll remove the bolts for it that we took from the vehicle, and the upper and lower bolts are both the same. Both of the U-joints move freely and don't feel like they have any play to them. The shaft also has no play to it because the two halves are rusted together. Something I hadn't realized from reading about these online was, until I saw it in person, I didn't know these actually did have a bit of rubber to dampen the road vibrations. So after all that talk about how bad the rag joints in the S10 steering shafts are, this one kinda sorta has one too. It's more like a bushing, and this would probably stay stiffer for longer, but eventually it would still rot away. Now, if we're going to use this shaft one way or another, we will have to get it to collapse. 
First off, because it'll make it a heck of a lot easier to install and remove, and second off, because the overall length in the S10 Blazer is not the same as it is in the Cherokee. We'll start by breaking off this plastic guard that seems like it probably has something to do with keeping the column in place, but we're gonna have to collapse it so we don't need that in the way. The plastic was pretty stuck to the shaft, but also pretty brittle, so we broke it off fairly easily. Then we'll put the shaft vertically in the vise and clean off the inner part of the shaft as well as the connection between the two halves as well as possible. And we'll also spray that connection with some WD-40 and let it soak in. We clamp the steering shaft in the vise so that the lower end is propped against the workbench and we'll give the other end a few taps with the mallet. And look at that, it's not a whole lot, but it is already moving a little bit. So we'll spray on some more WD-40 and keep at it. With the rust and that plastic guard out of the way, all things considered it collapsed fairly easily. After that we extended and collapsed it a few more times to get everything a bit more loose. Now we'll place the steering shaft back on the bench and measure it fully collapsed and fully extended. So how does that compare to the S10 steering shaft? Whether extended or collapsed, the Jeep steering shaft is a little bit longer. But the difference when collapsed is only about an inch and a quarter, so I'm pretty sure they're close enough that we can use it without feeling too bad about it. Of course, the main reason for a collapsible steering shaft is in the event of a hard collision, the intermediate steering shaft can collapse instead of slamming the steering wheel into your body or skewering you on the steering shaft. In this case, the truck has a standalone frame that's reasonably sturdy, and honestly, I don't think that inch and a quarter is going to make a huge difference. I did read about the process of separating the two halves and cutting the inner shaft a little bit shorter so that they're the same collapsed length, but it seems like a bit of unnecessary effort. In any case, that portion of the shaft we're just going to use as is. But how about the ends of the steering shaft? The lower end that mates with the steering gearbox is pretty much identical and has the same spline count. Some of these steering gearboxes have a little extension on the end of the input shaft that would have to be cut off to use a Jeep style of steering shaft. In this case, the gearbox that came on the S10 Blazer did have that little extension, but the one that's on there right now does not, so we're in good shape there. And the end that mates up with the steering column, unlike our Grand Cherokee steering shaft, is actually the right size and shape for the vehicle. The only difference there is the way the two intermediate shafts are bolted to the shaft in the column. The S10 shaft uses a through bolt, while the Cherokee shaft uses a pinch bolt. Now, this in itself isn't a big issue, the issue is that that pinch bolt requires a slot cut into the steering column shaft for it to interface with, and our S10 shaft, which was made for a through bolt, does not have that slot. My understanding is that most people who do this mod will use a Dremel to cut that slot into their S10 steering column shaft. I briefly toyed with the idea of having a custom bolt that slips over the shaft, but I realized without that notch, there would be nothing to keep the steering shaft from somehow eventually wiggling its way off over time. And in that same vein, I'm not really a fan of modifying the design to fit the pinch bolt coupler for our truck. Realistically, I'm sure it would be totally fine, but we're going to take a slightly different approach to this problem. What we'll do is keep that through bolt design by drilling a hole through the coupler on the end of the Jeep's intermediate steering shaft. We won't be replicating the square for the special bolt, and in its place we'll just use a regular bolt and nut. This means we'll have to hold the bolt in place while tightening the nut, but that's not really the biggest deal in the world. We'll transfer over the shape of the square, and then mark over its center point for drilling. And we'll repeat the same process with the circular hole on the other side to get our other center point. We'll drill each side separately in an attempt to make this as accurate as possible, also because we're using this hand drill which still had a bad chuck in it with a case of the wobbles. And with the shaft clamped in the vise, we'll start with a small drill bit. We'll drill each hole separately, then make sure everything lines up properly before moving to a larger size drill bit. Then we'll drill a 3 8 inch hole all the way through. We'll chamfer the edges and make sure our grade 8 3 8 inch bolt is a nice fit. The alignment of everything seems pretty darn good and this bolt fits with a washer on each side and a nylon lock nut. Having a lock nut is very important because this definitely isn't a bolt that you'd want to have rattle loose. But the concern with having a nylon lock nut here is how close this will sit to the exhaust manifold. 
Remember, the upper part of the old shaft actually rubbed on it, and we definitely wouldn't want that heat to contribute to the failure of the nylon insert. The melting point could vary quite a bit depending on the type of nylon, but the lowest I saw would be around 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which right next to the exhaust manifold, it probably still wouldn't reach in this particular vehicle, but it's better to be safe than sorry. But also unfortunately, we don't have a proper steel lock nut on hand for this bolt. At least, not one that I would trust the steering system to. So we'll take this regular old grade 8 nut and make our own lock nut. If you're familiar with steel lock nuts, you'll know that what they do is basically crimp the end of the nut so that the last few threads fit more tightly together than usual and they'll hold themselves in place. For us, instead of having a specialty hydraulic press tool to do this, we're just going to hit it with a big hammer. What we're looking to do is distort the nut just enough so that the threads fit tightly, but we definitely don't want to weaken it or make it impossible to get the bolt into it at all. Also, make sure that you don't hit the nut hard enough that you never see it again. We'll test our DIY lock nut by threading a bolt into it two or three times and it seems to be maintaining its shape and that tight fit, so I think we're good to go. You can also achieve the same result by using a sturdy center punch on the flats of the nut. So the way things are going, we should have a very solid connection between our intermediate shaft and the steering shaft in the column. But despite all these efforts we're going to, there's still that bit of rubber in the intermediate steering shaft itself. While it might remove a little bit of comfort, we do have a steering dampener, and those nice tall tires would probably hide a lot of road vibration even with a solid shaft. Plus, we're working with an independent front suspension system that's not exactly known for death wobble like the Jeep Cherokee is. The intermediate steering shaft uses this tab in this notch to limit over travel. Basically, if the rubber worked its way loose or even completely dissolved over time, this notch would still be there and the steering would still work. The whole thing wouldn't just fall apart. The S10 Blazer intermediate shaft has a very similar notch system, although it has a little bit more room for play in it. In an effort to make this Cherokee steering shaft as solid as possible and remove any possibility that this is where our steering looseness is coming from, we're going to go ahead and weld that tab in place. We'll start by just tack welding the tab in place, but we'll work all the way around that notch until everything is completely filled in. All this contaminated dirty steel doesn't make for the prettiest weld, but eventually I'm confident we'll have a strong one. And even if the weld failed, it would still be taking up that space, so it couldn't move anywhere anyway. But what we're trying not to do here is completely melt the rubber. Despite welding it solid up here, we might as well leave that rubber intact to fill in the rest of the gap between that coupler and the shaft itself. We also don't want to burn off the cup seals of that upper U-joint. The joints move nice and freely now, and we'd kind of like to keep it that way. So we'll take our time and keep cooling everything down in between welds. Doing this in the winter was a big help with that. As usual, Mother Nature provides. This piece of scrap metal we're inserting into the joint will also help keep the UV rays and heat away from the seals. And once we feel good about how solid the steering shaft is, we'll give it a quick coat of paint. And it should be done. We're ready to install our definitely modified, probably upgraded Jeep Cherokee steering shaft into our S10 Blazer. The steering shaft inside of the steering column already has anti-seize in place, so we'll go ahead and slide the intermediate steering shaft into place in the engine bay. Then we'll line it up and get it slotted into place. In order to maintain our steering wheel alignment, we do want to avoid rotating it at all costs, but if we turn it a little bit and just turn it back, it should be just fine. And if you attempt this on a vehicle with an airbag, you definitely want the steering wheel to stay where it is. It's definitely a tighter fit than the old steering shaft, which is probably a good thing, and eventually, with a bit of force, we get it into place. Then, again, we'll rotate it just a little bit to get our bolt and washer slotted into place. And we got it on the first try, everything lines up just as it should, which is a bit unusual, but a welcome change. Then we'll slide on a washer and start threading on our lock nut to the other side of the bolt. This is as far as we could get it by hand, which demonstrates that it is still working as a lock nut, and we'll leave it there for now. And now, for the lower half. Because of the work we did earlier in the vise, we were able to extend the steering shaft pretty easily and get it into place. 
Another reason this type of steering shaft is one commonly used for its swap is the clocking is the same as the S10 steering shaft, meaning that the shaft coming from the steering wheel and the input shaft on the gearbox will line up the same way as they did when the S10 intermediate shaft was in place. We'll put a few drops of blue thread locker on the bolt that we removed from the Cherokee and thread it into place. Then we'll torque that bolt to spec. But uh, which spec? We're going to go with the Jeep Cherokee steering shaft spec of 33 foot-pounds for the pinch bolts. It really didn't want to stay in place while tightening, so we used a pry bar in the U-joint to help keep it still. As for the upper bolt, well, yeah, I do see why the factory would use one that you only have to tighten on one side. It's a bit tricky to hold the bolt in place while tightening down the nut, and basically impossible to get a torque wrench on there, although since this is decidedly non-factory, it's not as valuable as a number. And because this is pretty awkward for our torque spec on the top bolt, we're just going to go with tight. And with it on there, we can see that the bolt is a bit longer than it needs to be. But it doesn't interfere with anything, so for now we're going to leave it on there like that. If I ever have to take it off, I'll try to get a bolt the right length or cut this one down. And with our new setup, there is absolutely zero play between the intermediate steering shaft and the shaft of the column. So there you go, now we have an entirely solid connection from the steering wheel down to the gearbox. And that's fantastic, except it didn't actually take very much play out of the steering system. It does feel a little bit better, but it's not dramatic. Certainly not what I had hoped for. So the problem definitely lies in the gearbox itself. In the future we'll have a go at adjusting it to see what we can do, otherwise we might have to get another one. But I really would rather not have to replace it again. Sometimes I like to get really specific and just provide all the information I could find about a specific topic. But for this one, I'm not sure I can. Beyond the vehicle that I got this shaft off of and the one I'm putting it onto, I can't really guarantee anything else. Most of the information I found about this online had at least some degree of conflicting information, and nobody seems to know exactly which years of Cherokee and Grand Cherokee have the correct type of steering shaft. And another alternative completely solid intermediate steering shaft is one from a Chevy Astro. And a little bit after the filming of this video, we ended up with one of those too. Now that one should fit without any modification, except that the clocking is different. So if that's a concern, it needs some modification as well. Oh, and generally speaking, this will only work with the first gen S10, because the second gens are a bit of a different ball game, though it is still possible. And as with a lot of things, if you put enough money into it, the aftermarket will provide, and there are some universal intermediate steering shaft kits that can help you out too. So for all those reasons and more, I don't think this is really a good guide, more of an example of how it was done on this particular truck. But I do hope somebody finds the information here at least a little bit helpful, if not just interesting. What the f? Wait, how do you. There. Aww. I know how things work.